So, in this class, uh, first I will discuss uh, uh, a problem where I will show how we can incorporate the bearing uh, incorporate the water table effect in the bearing capacity uh, equation and then we will discuss about the settlement criteria for the foundation design. So, first we are uh, taking the same problem that we took in the previous class that we are uh, uh, taking uh, that a foundation where homogeneous soil phi value is equal to 40 degree, then uh, unit weight of the soil above the water table is 18 kilo Newton per meter cube, then uh, uh, water table uh, unit weight of the saturated water is 20 kilo Newton per meter cube, then it is cohesion value is 0 and it is a homogeneous soil, depth of foundation is equal to 1 meter, B is equal to 3 meter, L is equal to 6 meter and then the unit weight of water that we are taking 10 kilo Newton per meter cube. So, as it is uh, phi value is greater than 36 degrees, so there will be a general shear failure. So, we can use the um, bearing capacity factor as we used in the last class and for this uh, because we are using only Tazaki's bearing capacity equation. So, as per Tazaki's bearing capacity equation, the uh, in the uh, first case, in the case 1, uh, we are taking no water table effect. So, our this is uh, in C, C u is 0. So, our q u will be that gamma d f into n q plus half into gamma b n gamma then correction 1 minus 0 0.2 b by l this is the factor. So, gamma is 18 because there is no water. So, we are taking 18 kilo Newton is the gamma d f is 1 and your n q is equal to 81.3 and n gamma is equal to 100.4 for phi is equal to 0 as per Tazaki. So, this is equal to 81.3 then plus half into 18 into b is equal to 3 then 100.4 1 minus 0 0.2 into 3 divided by 6. So, this value is coming out to be 3903.12 kilo Newton per meter square. So, this is the case 1 we have taking the no water table effect. So, this is without water table. Now, in the case 2 we are considering this water table is at the ground surface. So, in the case 2, your d w value is equal to 0. So, in the case 2, the water table is at the ground surface. The case 2, water table is at the g l or ground level. So, in that case, your here the equation q u will be gamma dash d f because d w is equal to 0. So, into n q plus half gamma dash b n gamma 1 minus 0 0.2 into b divided by l. So, gamma dash is the is equal to gamma sub is equal to 20 minus 10 that is gamma sat minus gamma w that is equal to 10 kilo Newton per meter cube. So, this will be 10 d f is 1 n q is 81.3 plus half gamma dash is 10 b is 3 n gamma is 100.4 1 minus 0 0.2 into 3 divided by 6. So, this value is coming out to be 
0.4 kilo newton per meter square. So, you can see there is a around 4000 kilo newton per meter square that is reduced to 2168.4. So, that means almost 50 percent reduction if the water table is located at the ground surface. So, in the case 3, we are considering that in the case 3, we are considering the water table is here with a depth of your d w is equal to 0.5. Okay? So, water table is here that is case 3. So, in the case 3 that water table d w is located depth of 0.5 below g l. Okay? So, now in this case the q u will be again this is 0. So, q u will be the gamma dash is 10 into d f is 1 plus gamma is 18 minus this is 10 into d f is 0 0.5 that whole is equal to this is the 81.3 then plus half gamma dash is 0 into b is uh, gamma dash is 10 into b is 3 n gamma is 100.4 into 1 minus 0 0.2 into 3 by 6 and this value is coming out to be 2493.6 kilo newton per meter square because you can remember that this in these two cases in water case 2 and case 3 the second third term i mean second gamma is always gamma dash because it is always the soil below the water table is always under submerged condition so but you can see that as because this the bearing capacity is increase in case 3 as compared to case 2 because if we lower down the water table then our bearing capacity value will again increase and then if we uh, place the water table as a greater depth then this effect will vanish so in the next case that we are doing is suppose in the case 4 in the case uh, case 4 where we are placing water table is at the base so my case 4 the water table is at the base of the foundation so from this equation then you have to use this equation in this equation that is b is equal to 0 so in the case 4 if it is water table at the base of the foundation then gamma bar will be gamma dash is 10 plus 0 because the b is equal to 0 so this will be 10 kilo newton per meter cube so my this is 0 q u will be because the, now the what soil above the water table is uh, there is the soil above the base of the uh, uh, foundation there is no water so we have to consider that unit weight is 18 and then d f is 1 into n q is 81.3 then plus half into b is 3 meter b is 3 meter then n gamma is 100.4 and then gamma bar which is 10 then 1 minus 0 0.2 into 3 divided by 6 so this value is coming out to be 2818.8 kilo newton per meter square. So, bearing capacity is further increase. Now, in the case 5, we have this is case 4 and in the case 5, 
we have considered the B value water table is at a depth of 1 meter below the footing. So, case 5 water table is at a depth of 1 meter below the base of the foundation. So, my B value is equal to 1 meter. So, I can uh, write the equation Q u is equal to this will be the again 18 into 1 into 81.3 plus this equation half B is 3 then gamma bar is 10 plus B is 1 meter capital B is 3 meter then gamma is 18 minus gamma bar is 10 then the total is 100.4, then the correction factor 1 minus 0 0.2 into 3 divided by 6. So, this will be the okay, uh, equation and the final value is 3180.7 kilo Newton per meter square. So, bearing capacity is further increase if I place the water table at a depth of 1 meter below the foundation. So, in this uh, way we can uh, see that that the ground water table if you place at the uh, uh, ground level. So, that will give the worst condition and lowest bearing capacity. Now, in the next part here, I am finishing the bearing capacity part. Now, I will, I will start the next part that is the settlement criteria of the foundation design. So, as I have already mentioned that uh, uh, the foundation uh, design has two criteria, one is bearing capacity, another is the settlement. Now, in the settlement, first we know that what are the different types of settlement. The different types of settlement or that means, there is the first one is the total settlement or if your foundation is the settle uniformly, then this type of because this is your uh, original level of the foundation and after the settlement, this is the final level of the foundation. So, this is the uniformly the your foundation is settled. So, that means, this settlement is called the uniform settlement where or you can say this is the total settlement also. So, that is the uniform settlement. The next one, if you have two columns and you have two uh, individual foundation for the columns. So, there is a possibility because your load on the two columns are not same. So, there is a possibility that uh, both the columns may deform in different way. So, in that case, if the one column deformation is S 1. So, suppose this is the original position of the foundation top and this is the final position of the foundation top, then this is the S 1 and then this is the S 2 for the second column, then there will be a angular distortion or this, is this angular distortion you can say this is the delta is the difference of your settlement. So, that means, here this is the your delta value is delta value is basically S 2 minus S 1, which is the difference of the settlement. And then, if I divide it to the spacing between two columns or two foundation, then that will give you the angular distortion. In now, in sometimes this delta is also called the differential settlement. So, now, when you design the this foundation, then you have to check the total settlement, then you have to check the differential settlement, because you cannot have a excessive amount of the total settle, settlement as well as the excessive amount of the differential settlement also, because then uh, you will be problem in your structure. So, that means, 
we have to make foundation such that the total settlement and the differential settlement should be within the permissible limit. So, that means, this is the differential settlement or the in other way the angular distortion that you have to check. Now, the next type of thing is that the tilting. Now, in the previous case, was so the difference between the angular distortion or the differential settlement and the tilting is that in previous case, your two foundation as the differential as the different settlement, but here your uh, settlement this is also differ due to the differential settlement, but the differential settlement in such that that one side of the building is deformed more compared to the other side of the building, then the total building will tilt because of this differential settlement. So, so that means settlement difference. So that tilting, tilting that means when the total system, total building will tilt. So, that also you have to take care. So, there is there is basically this type of settlement that will there will be uniformly settlement, uniform settlement or the maximum settlement, there will be the differential settlement or the angular distortion or there will be the tilting. So, all these things you have to take care during the design of the foundation. Now, the settlement of the shallow foundation is basically three types. So, that means, the, this is the summation of the three types of settlement. The first settlement that is S t total settlement is S i, S c and S s. So, S i is the immediate or the elastic settlement generally you get immediately after application of the load and it takes place during the during the application of the loading and in the in clay this the settlement is due to the change in the shape of the soil without a change in the volume of the what or the water content. It is neglected as compared to the long term shape settlement. So, in the in case of sandy soil the, um, uh, the majority of the settlement is the immediate settlement. So, or you can say the total settlement is the immediate settlement because it is sandy soil if you ap uh, if you apply the load then the settlement will be happen immediately, but in the clay soil this is the immediate settlement is the settlement that will occur due to the shape change of the soil. It is not the volume change of the soil or the water content change of the soil, because when there will be change in the volume or when you apply the load the water will dissipate. So, volume your water ratio will reduce and there will be settlement that settlement in the consolidation settlement that is not the immediate settlement. But the immediate settlement in the clay it is due to the change in shape of the soil. So, in that in case of clay the immediate settlement is the negligible amount. So, the most of the settlement will be the consolidation settlement or the third type of the settlement. So, that means in, in the sand the most of the settlement is the immediate settlement in the clay the immediate settlement is negligible compared to the long term settlement, because immediate settlement is the short term settlement. Now, S c is the primary consolidation settlement due to happen due to the consolidation or due to the uh, uh, dissipation of the water, the volume reduces and settlement occurs. And S c is the secondary compression settlement, it occurs because of the volume change occurring due to the rearrangement of the particle. So, that means, when there is a volume change there will be particle rearrangement because of that there will be also a settlement. So, that is the S S. So, that means, if I uh, draw a graph. So, there is three types of settlement immediate settlement, primary settlement or primary consolidation settlement and or the secondary uh, uh, settlement which is called as the uh, secondary compression. So, that means, here the primary uh, consolidation and secondary settlements are the time dependent settlement, but the immediate settlement is not the time dependent settlement. Immediately after application of the load the settlement will occur. So, now the granular soil the immediate settlement is the entire settlement, because the other two settlements are uh, negligible because most of the settlement will occur immediately, but for the inorganic clay the primary consolidation accounts the major part of the settlement and for the organic clay secondary compression accounts major part of the settlement. So, now for the uh, organic clay it is the third part will take the major one, but the for the inorganic clay so primary consolidation will take the major part. So, and then but 
the long short term settlement for the clay soil also negligible compared to the long term settlement. So, now when you design this thing or settlement calculations, we have to take care all these things. If it is sandy soil, you have to take the immediate settlement. If it is a if it is a inorganic clay, then you have to take the uh, primary consolidation settlement. Now, how I will calculate the immediate settlement? Because it is the immediate or the elastic settlement, because when we apply it is elastically immediate. Okay? So, that means the elastic settlement we can use using this equation. So, where q is the net foundation pressure. So, that means the q value is the if it is the foundation base. So, how much net pressure is acting at the foundation base. So, that is called the q b is the width of foundation or this is the width of foundation mu is the poison ratio of the soil and e is the elastic modulus or Young's modulus of the soil. So, how we will calculate the we will get the elastic modulus if we have a stress strain this is the axial strain and this is the stress diagram. So, in the soil we have this type of uh, uh, stress strain curve. So, elastic means the, the slope of the stress strain curve in the in the initial straight portion. Though this the slope of this curve will give you the elastic modulus of the soil. So, basically it is the stress divided by the strain and this is the elastic zone that means the straight portion of the stress strain curve. And then I f is the influence factor and then when you calculate the elastic settlement then we have to apply two corrections then the depth corrections one is the rigidity correction that you have to apply for the rough foundation. So, now if depth correction is required all the expressions are developed for the surface footing, but you will place the foundation at a depth below the ground surface. So, you have to apply a correction in the settlement and the rigidity correction is that that if you are you are designing a foundation which is isolated footing then that is flexible kind of uh, kind of foundation. Now, if you are applying or designing a raft foundation which is a rigid kind of foundation in that type of foundation you have to apply a rigidity correction. So, immediate settlement you have to apply two corrections one is the depth corrections another is the rigidity correction. Next one, so these are the influence uh, factor for, uh, factor values for the flexible foundation and the rigid foundation or the raft flexible foundation or the isolated footing. So, this is for the circular, square, rectangular all L by B value L is the length B is the width of the foundation. So, at the center at the corner and this is the average and this is the rigidity correction for the rigid foundation a uh, rigid foundation these are the I f value. Now, if you look at these uh, values, so these I f values for the rigid correct uh, rigid foundation is almost 80 percent of the I f value that you are getting at the center of the flexible foundation. So, what we do that that is why what we do that we use the I f value for the center uh, at the center because that is the maximum at the center for the flexible foundation in case of rigid foundation design. Then we apply a rigidity correction of 0 0.8 for the rigid foundation. So, that means we will use only the I f value of the we will use the I f value of flexible foundation at the center both flexible foundation and the rigid foundation. So, for the flexible foundation we will not apply any correction, but the rigid foundation over this settlement will apply a rigidity correction which is 0 0.8. So, now typical value of the mu poison ratio of the soil is given in this, this chart. So, this chart uh, you can uh, use for your reference purpose. So, these are the all poison ratio values are given uh, for the different soil. So, you can see for the unsaturated it is 0.123, but for the saturated clay it is close to the 0.5. So, that is we generally take 0.45 for the for the saturated clay and sand it is 0.25 to 0.15, sealed it is 0.3. So, these are the poison ratio value. 
Similarly, we can get the uh, Young's modulus or the elastic modulus of the of the soil by using these equation. This is E value is the elastic modulus and these are the equation that. So, we will use this equation when we solve the problem and then I will discuss this how we will use this equation in that when we solve the problem. But these are the value n value is the SPT value and for the soft K by using cone resistance also you can get the E value that elastic modulus by using these expression. Remember that E is in kilo Newton per meter square. And for the clay soil also we can use uh, we can use the undrained cohesion or the undrained strength, strength of the soil SU. So, that is your uh, for the normally consolidated clay you will get uh, e, e, e elastic modulus and for the over consolidated clay. So, I have discussed what is normally consolidated, what is over consolidated and for the sensitive clay generally we will concentrate in these two over consolidated and normally consolidated or heavily over consolidated normally consolidated. So, you will get this S u is nothing but for uh, uh, this case is S u is equal to C u undrained cohesion. So, that if you know the undrained cohesion then we will get the E value from this range. Generally, if you uh, uh, know the C u value you take the uh, average value of this range and that you can if nothing is mentioned you take the average value of this range and then you use for the elastic modulus calculation for the clay. Now, so elastic modulus for the um, uh, uh, other tables are given to this is the range of elastic modulus. So, your elastic modulus that you are you are you are taking that should be within this range. So, there are a uh, number of ways you can determine the elastic modulus. So, for the clay soil and the sandy soil. So, but this should be within this range that table is given. So, next one is the consolidation settlement. So, consolidation settlement you can calculate in um, this is the for the normally consolidated uh, soil. So, that is the settlement equation and you can do it in uh, two ways and what are the values are given based on that C C is the compression index and M B is the coefficient of volume compression. So, if you have uh, volume compression compressibility value and then you have to use the second equation you have if you have the compression index value then you have to use the first equation. And remember that this P 0 is the initial effective overburden pressure before applying the foundation and del P is the additional stress that is coming due to the foundation load or the load that is coming on the uh, to the foundation from the superstructure and from the foundation to the soil. So, that means, the del P is the is the is the stress that at a point in the soil is induced due to the applied external load and P 0 bar is the soil pressure which is effective overburden pressure and here we have to apply three corrections. So, what are these three corrections? Say for the depth corrections, for the rigidity corrections and for the pore water pressure corrections. Because depth correction is common for flexible footing and the rigid footing or the raft foundation, but rigidity correction is applicable only for the rigid footing or the raft, but it is not applicable for the flexible foundation. But the pore water pressure correction is applicable for both raft flexible and the rigid footing. So, isolated footing there are two corrections depth correction and the pore water pressure correction, but for the rigid footing or the raft foundation there are three corrections that you have to apply in the consolidation settlement that is the depth correction, rigidity correction and the pore water pressure correction. Now, the so I will discuss that as as well I was mentioned that this is for normally consolidated clay in the second lecture I have discussed that from the E log P curve you will get the pre consolidation pressure. So, if this is your this is your this is your log p and this is E y ratio and the if this is the P c value. So, now if your so that means you have two stresses one is the p plus p 0 or p 0 bar which is the initial effective overburden pressure because it is bar effective. So, P 0 plus del P. So, now 
if your both the pressure are, are within this range, then it is the normally consolidation case where the slope is CC, uh, CC compression index. So, if then then you have to use this expression and if your P P 0 bar plus del P in uh, in this range, then we have to use instead of C C, this will be C S soil in index. So, these things I have discussed in the second lecture. So, you you you, uh, you can go through that uh, lecture and you can uh, see that where we have to use C S, where you have to use C C. C C is for the normally consolidation uh, soil, uh, consolidated soil and C S for the over consolidated soil, if your del P plus P 0 range is here. I mean beyond um, less than P C, then you have to use C S. If this total value is greater than P C, then you have to use the C C. Another option is that your P 0 bar is here, but P 0 plus del P is in this range. That means, the P 0 is less than P 0 bar is less than P C, but P 0 bar plus del P is greater than P C. So, then you have to use the third equation that I have given in that, that lecture. So, but here most of the problem that I will solve in this uh, course is normally consolidated soil. So, we will use this equation which is the for the normally consolidated soil. So, mainly I will use this equation and if the values are given in this form, then we can use this equation also, but either this or this that we will use. Now, the uh, we are talking about the um, rigidity correction, you know that if the foundation is rigid, if depth correction is also you know that if uh, because these are equation are developed for the uh, surface footing, but we are placing for footing as some depth. So, to apply the depth correction, but why you have to go for the pore water pressure correction? Because pore water pressure correction is required the all these equation that uh, I am talking about this Tazaki 1 D consolidation equation. So, that means, here it is assumed that the soil will deform in one directional, I mean only in the vertical direction, but actually the consolidation is a 3D problem, because your soil can flow not only in the vertical direction, it can flow in any direction x, y, z. So, that means, it is actually 3D problem, but the equation that we are using that is derived for 1D problem. So, that is why you have to apply a correction that is for pore water pressure correction. So, that is uh, correction is uh, value is correction factor is this one and this one. So, these are the range of these for the what is the range of this correction factor for different clays. So, we are talking about we will consider it here. So, normally consolidated clay it is 0.721. So, we have to first we will uh, calculate the uh, consolidation uh, settlement for uh, considering 1 D equation, then we multiply with this correction factor to convert it for the 3 D problem. So, this is the normally consolidated clay and this is for the over consolidated clay and this is for the heavily over consolidated clay. And then, yeah, if we have the pore water pressure parameter A. So, now, uh, uh, from the soil mechanics course, you know that these two pore water pressure parameter, one is A and one is B. So, if we have a parameter value, then by using this chart which is proposed by uh, IS code. So, we can calculate the correction, uh, this is settlement coefficient. So, which is nothing but the value that we are using for the correction factor. So, that is for you can use for this. What is this chart? Because if we have a, this is the foundation base and this H T is the thickness of the soil layer that you are talking or you are considering for the foundation settlement calculation. So, remember that when you are I am talking about that bearing capacity, then the influence zone was taken as B, but when we are calculating the settlement, then you have to go for a bigger influence zone, then the influence zone is generally taken as 1.52 twice B. So, for the bearing capacity calculation, we will consider the soil parameter up to the B from the base of the foundation, but 
For the settlement calculation, we will consider the soil up to a depth of 1.52 b from the base of the foundation, but I will prefer, I will always use twice b as the influence zone when it is settlement calculation. So, I will use a soil up to the depth twice b from the base of the foundation during the settlement calculation. So, here, so this, this is the H t, this is the influence zone, but there may be some rigid uh, bed also, there you cannot go up to twice b. So, you have to restrict it within the twice b, if there is a hard rock say. So, in those case, in so that means the actual H t is the thickness of the soil layer that you are considering during the settlement calculation and b is the width of foundation. So, if you know H t by b values and if you know the a, so from here for the uh, different H t by b's values. So, we have this is normally consolidated range, which is over consolidated range and we will be very sensitive case. If you know for example, if our A value is is 0.8 okay? and we have a um, uh, circular footing. So, that means the farm line and stiff footing the dotted line. So, we will go for the farm line and H T by B say 1. So, H T by B this is the H T by B 4, this is 1, this is 0 0.5, this is 0.25. So, H T by B 1 is this one and then corresponding correction factor will be around 0 0.87. So, our correction factor will be 0 0.87 if H T by e B is 1 and this is for H T by B is equal to 1 and A value is equal to 0 0.8. So, if your A value is given and uh, if you are designing H B is obviously given and H T you have to decide how much influence zone you will consider and then corresponding correction factor you will get from this chart and that value is 0 0.87. So, similarly for the other case also we can determine what will be the correction factor for pore water pressure. So, here I am uh, finishing this class uh, for this class and the next class I will discuss about that how I will apply these uh, theories and then calculate the settlement and then uh, uh, how will what are the procedure you will apply for the settlement calculation of the clay and what are the procedure or the methodology you will we will choose suitable calculation for the sand and then we will discuss about the plate load test also that is the load test that we will do in the field to get the settlement and the bearing capacity from the plate load test. So, these those things we will discuss in the next classes. Thank you.